welcome to the Coronavirus Weekly Brief. I'm your host, Emily Schneider. David Sturman will be back with us next week. Here are the headlines you need to know. As of Saturday, more than 4 million cases of COVID-19 have been reported in the United States for the month of November, over twice the record-breaking 1.9 million cases recorded in October. The number was reported as millions of Americans traveled for Thanksgiving, with over 1 million passengers clearing airport security the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. On Saturday, more than 91,000 people in the United States were hospitalized with COVID-19, more than at any other point during the pandemic, and on Wednesday, nearly 2,300 people died from COVID-19, the deadliest day since May. Experts say numbers are likely to continue surging over the coming weeks. After scientists raised doubts about the initial vaccine trial results, drug company AstraZeneca announced that it would be conducting additional clinical trials. Last week, AstraZeneca became the third company after Pfizer and Moderna to announce promising clinical trial results for a COVID-19 vaccine. The company reported an overall efficacy of approximately 70%, with 90% efficacy achieved in a group that received a half dose followed by a full dose. The more successful method was tested by accident after a contractor accidentally administered half doses to volunteers. No volunteers in this group were over 55, an age group that is more susceptible to COVID-19. The new trials will be focused on validating the half-dose plus full-dose method, according to AstraZeneca. On Saturday, British police arrested over 150 people as they shut down an anti-lockdown protest in central London near Westminster. The protesters were gathering to demonstrate their displeasure with the government's current lockdown measures, which is scheduled to end on December 2nd. Different restrictions will then take effect. Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced the new set of restrictions last week that will divide England into three tiers, meaning that access to bars and restaurants will differ drastically from place to place based on the government's threat assessment. In Turkey, the government has resumed reporting all positive coronavirus tests, not just the number of patients being treated for symptoms, confirming what medical groups and opposition parties have suspected for a while, the country's health system is overwhelmed by coronavirus cases. With the new data, the number of daily cases rose to above 30,000 and pushed the country to the top of the list of worst-hit countries in Europe. The Turkish Medical Association has been warning for months that the government was concealing the gravity of the situation by their selective reporting methods and lack of transparency. With the change in methodology, the country's caseload almost quadrupled from about 7,400 to 28,300. As many as 87 million Americans could lose access to paid sick and family health leave at the end of the year if a congressional relief package is not renewed. Under the Families First Relief Package enacted in March, millions of workers in both the public and private sectors are entitled to two weeks of coronavirus-related sick leave at full pay and 12 weeks of leave to care for family members with the virus at two-thirds pay. The bill, which costs about $105 billion, covers about half of the U.S. workforce. Unions, labor law experts, and members of Congress warn that the ongoing political stalemate over a new coronavirus relief bill will sever the aid amid an anticipated continued surge in cases. Friday's post-Thanksgiving shopping extravaganza saw sales nearly halved compared to 2019 at brick-and-mortar shops while online purchases surged. The traffic at physical stores dropped 52%, according to a report from Sensormatic Solutions. But Friday also proved to be the second biggest online spending day in U.S. history, with an estimated total revenue of $7.4 billion, according to Adobe Analytics. This was topped only by last year's Cyber Monday. This year's Cyber Monday is poised to hit at least $10.8 billion, according to Adobe, setting a new record. To see our daily brief, go to the address in our show notes and follow us on Twitter at New America ISP. The Coronavirus Weekly Brief was produced by Shannon Lynch and Jason Stewart and was edited by Shannon Lynch. This podcast is brought to you by New America and Arizona State University.